In this video, I'm going to address a question that I received based on my introduction tutorial about modeling this desk clock. Somebody wanted clarification about why I approached the modeling of the front of this desk clock after we had cut out the area where the clock itself would go, why I dissolved edges, why I connected things up the way I did. And so that's what we're going to address in this video. For people who are really new to polygon modeling and subdivision surface, we're going to address some of the whys about why I did what I did. So before we dive in and look at this itself, let, let's just create a new basic file. And we're going to come into the front view, turn off perspective, and we're going to delete the cube. And we're going to start off by just defining what a subdivision surface is based on a simple plane. So I did just a shift A and we're going to create that simple plane. It's a single polygon. We're going to come over and we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier to it. And you can see how when I press the tab key to go into edit mode, it's created a new set of polygons based off this parental polygon that we call a cage. Now, if we come over to the modifier for the subdivision and increase the subdivision level to three, you can see it increases the resolution of those subdivided polygons. Now, you're always editing the cage itself. So if I grab this edge on the side, I can pull this out. And if I want to extrude another polygon off to the side, I can press the E key and extrude another polygon, which I'm going to do just along the X axis. But I can come over here with the face tool and I can select either of these cage polygons that we're working with. And that is the essence of what subdivision surfaces is about is modeling with primarily quad based polygons to create this high resolution curved surface. So let's come back over to edges here, press the E key, but I want to extrude along the Y axis. So press the Y key and then I can do that again, E key and then Y key. And we're ultimately again dealing with just these cage quad based polygons. Quad based polygons give you the greatest predictability when you are creating a subdivision surface object. So let's come in and create another object that's going to be more appropriate to the clock model we're working on. So I'm going to delete this, press Shift and A, and we're going to add back in just a circle. Let's make sure it conforms to the world. And let's take its vertices down to something like 16. And we want to make sure the fill is filled with an end gone. So let's come into the top view press the tab key to go into edit mode, press the I key to inset a new set of polygons. Now we're going to delete the middle polygon here. So press the X key and then delete the face. So let's come in now and apply a subdivision modifier to this object. So come down to subdivision surface and let's set it to value of three. So you can see that we have created the smoothly flowing curved surface that's defined by the edges and the points of the quad based polygon that we have. And when we come over here and double click this at an edge in face mode, it creates a selection of the loop that comprises this object. So let's come in here and press command R, control R on the PC and just click and return. And we've added a new loop down the middle and it has created quads on either side of that. So here again, even though the shape of the polygons is not perfectly square, it's the configuration of a four sided polygon that's of interest for the predictability of a subdivision surface object. So we could come over into edge mode now, for instance, and let's, let's just look at this in the top view. Let's back out and I can select every other edge loop like this. I'm just holding the shift key and double clicking on each of these. And then we could form the subdivision surface by taking and moving each of these in order to produce this type of a shape. So you see, this is why subdivision surfaces is such a wonderful technology. Now, let's also give this shade smoothing. You can see that the subdivided polygons are flat. We want them to appear smooth. So right click and just give it shade smooth. But let's introduce some irregularity into this that's going to inform us about what we need to do with our clock model. So let's come back into 
edit mode. And let's switch over here into just the basic wireframe view. And you're going to note that the points are very well arranged and we don't have any points in the middle of the edge. But if I come over and let's say I press the K key and I click on this vertex and I put a point right here and return, it changes the subdivision and we suddenly get kind of a kink in the subdivision. So if we press the tab key to leave edit mode, we just sort of back ourselves out. Our circular form isn't quite so circular anymore because it's just subdividing the cage mesh as we've modified it. And we don't really want that kink to be there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back in and we're going to open back up the clock model. So remember everything that we had just done was with a quad based polygon, but here we don't have quads. We've got polygons that have more than four sides, which is n gons. We do have some quads here, like right here and right here, but it's these n gons that are going to become problematic. But it's not just that we have n gons, it's that we have vertices that are being placed on the flat ends of polygons here that's going to create this irregularity. So let's come over and turn subdivision back on, and we can see here that it's quite irregular. The circular form would like to be circular. And so we need to do something with this to make it more predictable. And that's the essence of what led me to the operations that I did in the clock tutorial that we'll go ahead and do again. So let's examine this a little bit more closely. If you look up here, you can see that we've got something that clearly doesn't look right, even if you don't know what's going on. I have said in other tutorials that you can have subdivision surfaces and have an end gone in places, but there are times that you don't want to have it. And this is one of them. And that's because the subdivided polygons can back in on themselves. So let's turn off subdivision here, especially when you're new, I don't recommend you have it turned on. You really want to become cognizant of the polygon structure you're working on. So let's come over into vertex mode and we need to figure out how to dice this up into that patchwork of polygons press the K key, which is the knife tool. Let's come over down here and draw this out. Press X and then C, the C key. You can see that show up at the bottom and that will project this knife cut all the way through the model. Click and return. Let's do the same thing here. X key, C key and click and return. So what we've begun to do is dice that irregularity up into the regularity of a patchwork of quad based polygons that subdivision surfaces will really like and will give you predictability in the final form. Before we go too much further, let's also be aware of the fact that we're also working with a set of polygons that are planar polygons. So if I come over here into face mode and I select a single polygon here, let's do select linked flat faces and it will select all of these planar polygons. If we come into the top view, we can see that they're all planar. Well, that gives us flexibility in how we configure these polygons. So let's focus back down around this area because we've still got some irregularity of n-gons. One of the things that I've mentioned before that I mentioned previously is that n-gons that, that kind of begin to back in on themselves are ones you specifically always want to dice up into quads. But we also have the endpoint here of this loop, this edge loop coming up into the middle of a face. And that will always cause a kink in the curvature of the subdivision there. So how do we deal with that? Because we're dealing with these planar polygons, we have some freedom. The big thing that I know is that I don't want these vertices landing in the middle of this edge, nor this edge here. So I could come in and I could select both of these edges and I could simply perform a dissolve edge function. In this particular case, we want to dissolve the vertices and then we no longer have those vertices, but we're left needing to figure out how to patch up this large end gone right here. So take this vertex, hold the shift key and take this vertex, press the J key to connect them. And this one and this one, press the J key. And 
we've now taken and created a whole patchwork of quad-based polygons all in this planar region. Even if they don't look perfectly square, they're quads and we don't have vertices in flat areas. So when we come into this quadrant, this quadrant right here, we turn subdivision back on, you can see from this point here, this 90 degree point down to this one, we have nice regularity in that curvature. So let's come up to the top and let's do the same thing. You can clearly see that we've got this irregularity in the subdivision form. We've got a kink down here. So let's turn, let's come into vertex mode. I like seeing the vertices and let's turn off subdivision and let's do sort of the same thing that we had done before, K key. And let's just pull this off to the side, X, C, click and return. And then here I could say, well, I want to form maybe a connection from here to here. So I would press J key to connect those. And look what we have. We have a quad here, even if it's not perfectly square. But again, we don't want a vertex right here. So this is where I would look and I would kind of see, well, I've got a vertex here that's unconnected. So we just come select these two, J key, and then two key takes us into edge mode. Take this and do a dissolve, making sure we're dissolving vertices. And then we no longer have a vertex right here to interrupt the flow of our subdivision. And then finally, I'm going to take this vertex, hold the shift key, click the one that I wanted to weld to, press the M key, and then perform a merge at last operation. So we end up with a triangle here. And that's okay, because again, we have a planar region. And as long as you're in planar regions, this irregularity doesn't really matter so much. Our primary concern is the flow of this open region and what's happening in this open boundary. So here again, when we come over and we turn subdivision back on, now we have total regularity where we've gone to the effort to correct that. So I hope that gives some clarification why it is that we ended up patching these polygons up the way that we did in order to produce a regular patchwork of polygons that subdivision surfaces would give us predictable results with.